I'm, uh, I've thought quite deeply about the teacher-student relationship. But I, I, and another caveat I'll throw in here, and we should probably should put this part on tape at some point, is that in the Tibetan tradition, anyway, you've got at least three levels of student-teacher relationship, and they need to be differentiated, and because different things operate. What are they? You are probably familiar with the three levels for uh, three ordinations. That is the monastic or um, individual liberation ordination, and then the bodhisattva or universal vow, well, and, and then the vajrayana. In the uh, in the individual liberation ordination, the relationship is uh, between teacher and student is basically that of elder. And uh, whatever. Uh, so as an advisor, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, and there's respect. And maybe there is devotion, but that's not actually used. Uh, it, it's it's uh, a senior person in the Sangha providing guidance, coaching, mentoring, or whatever to a junior post, uh, person. In the Mahayana, uh, that's where you, you, uh, the term Gary Shenyin uh, comes in, uh, which has been translated as spiritual friend. I'm not sure how I would translate it, but I don't think spiritual friend um, This is, I would say, pretty akin to the Catholic sense of spiritual director. Uh, and this is a person who you have deep conversations and who gives you instruction and guidance. And again, respect and quite possibly devotion, but the devotion isn't used as a part of the path per se. Uh, and there's ways of relating and honoring, because in honoring that spiritual friend, you're honoring your own potential for enlightenment. At the Vajrayana, you now have a guru, which is a very different ball of wax. Uh, in which the, uh, in my view, this is where the student-teacher relationship has matured to a certain point of view that allows a guru-student relationship. And it's a very different kind of relationship. And in the Kajyo and Nyingma, and really in the uh, other Tibetan traditions, uh, explicit use is made of the devotion in that relationship to power uh, insight. In Mahayana, it's compassion is what is used. In the Theravadan, loving kindness. But in the Vajrayana, you use, Vajra, uh, you use devotion. So that's apt considerably. And it changes a lot of the things. Are we taping right now? OK. Uh, so uh, then I'll just keep going. In my view here, It's very much about the maturation of a relationship. Uh, I suppose some people will just start into it. I remember, for instance, Larry Mermelstein describing to me when he met Trumpa. He said, I realized this person just knew things that I didn't know, and that was that. Uh, so some element of devotion just started right away. Uh, but the, the crucial thing in the Vajrayana relationship, I mean, you've heard about obeying the Lama's precepts and looking at the uh, guru as a Buddha and all of this. Well, I've reflected on this quite deeply because uh, I needed to for my own personal reasons over the last three or four years. And I've come to the conclusion that all of those protocols are actually a very precise way of handling the inevitable foibles of humanity when one person is regarding another as a symbol of awakened mind. And I can elaborate on that if you wish. The guru-student relationship can begin uh, when the relationship, when, when the teacher and the student are both have both achieved a certain level of maturity, on the teacher side, the only 
concern the teacher has in the relationship is the student's awakening. And that's the only interest. The teacher may receive a certain amount from the student in terms of offerings or even payment, or whatever you want to call it, in order to live. Uh, but there is no sense of gain from the student in any way, whether it's uh, material, uh, companionship, uh, political, financial, or temporal influence of any kind. And if the teacher moves to any of those, <coughs> he or she immediately steps out of the relationship. And the relationship is gone. The teacher is violated. So on the teacher's side, the teacher has the ability to guide a student and has no other interest but helping the student to awaken. And you see that, actually, when you think about it very clearly in interaction between, say, Tilopa and Naropa. He had no other interest in, in Naropa, which freedom to do anything. On the student side, the student needs to have hung around with this person and interacted with him or her so that the student knows that the teacher, or in the case the guru that we're talking about, has no other interest but his awakening or the student's awakening. That's, that's, it has to know that. And that can only come about through the experience of the relationship. You know, the words aren't good enough. It has to come through the experience of the relationship. <clears throat> and the student has to reach the point in their own practice where he or she is prepar prepared to work with what emotion, any emotional reactivity that comes up, they're going to use as fuel for the practice. Because in any relationship between human beings, there are going to be things that come up. The teacher may be tired one day, and the student asks a question, and the teacher says, oh, ask me about that tomorrow. And the student feels rejected. Well, in the guru-student relationship, the student would work with their own feeling of rejection and wouldn't project that onto the teacher, which I think is what the essence is. But is, this, is the teacher going to behave like a human sometimes? Absolutely. But the student's going to use it. The student's going to use his or her own reactions to whatever the teacher does. This in no way gives any license to the teacher to exploit the student. No way gives any license. In some ways, um, yeah, I, mean, I mean, I'm sure you've heard the Buddhist cop. I was like, well, you know, just work with it. You know, seems yeah. like you know, on one side of the table, you know, people get to say or do whatever they want, and then on the other side of the table, it's like, well, you know, there's the world of your projections, and yeah, but let, let me or, or what it is to fuel your practice. Just let me finish, one, and then we'll come back to that point. The relationship has to mature so that the teacher is confident that the student will actually use his or her own reactions. And so this frees the teacher from having to have any kind of role or, um, what do you say, uh, posture with respect to the student. And so now it, it, it enables this, this, the relationship actually to move to a much closer level of intimacy. There's no intimacy because there, there's no uh, need for any barriers because the student, the teacher, has confidence in the student's ability and willingness to use any emotional reactivity that comes up. And on the other hand, the student knows that the teacher is only concerned with their own uh, with their own awakening. So that makes a very, very powerful relationship. It's a little different way of looking at all of that stuff. And, and so uh, Tulak Trengwa, who is a great Kaju scholar and master of the 
16th, 17th century. Uh, in his uh, commentary on uh, the uh, Vajrayogini practice, uh, one of the appendices is a long discussion of the uh, root and branch downfalls. And the first one, you know, obey the Lama, he says, this is only in, with respect to spiritual practice. There's no indication, there's n doesn't mean about everything in the world. It's only in, in, in the context of the student's spiritual practice that has to be obeyed. And why it's important for the student not to repudiate a teacher is because in repudiating a teacher, the student is closing the door on their own spiritual growth. And that's why it's important. So, when, when we take it out of all of the cultural stuff and look, you know, what is this relationship? You, you can look at it and see it. It's not about a power struggle or a, 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 a power position at all. This is a very precise way of ensuring that two people could relate very, very deeply and not let the inevitable foibles of human relationship upset the relationship which is in which the student is using devotion to, to the teacher to power their own practice. And that's very clear. If you look at the Nyingma and the Kaju, Shampu Kaju anyway, pointing out instructions, the sole purpose of cultivating this intensity of devotion is to form an emotional relationship with what is ultimately true. And through the power of that emotional relationship to transform emotional energy into attention, which allows you to penetrate the subject-object dualism and all of those things which prevent us knowing our own nature. There you have it. <laughs>